So, hi everyone, and thank you, Rami, for saving the day. Um, this talk will be about uh, many of the activities that we are doing uh, uh, in Linux Foundation AI and uh, in the open source, uh, uh, in the OSI open source initiative and the definition of open source AI. Um, I'll start with yeah, uh, the agenda that we have for today, Linux Foundation AI. Uh, the organization the, uh, that we are, uh, many of us are part of, uh, the Generative AI Commons. I will talk about the Model Openness Framework, which is something that we have created as part of the, gen uh, the Generative AI Commons. I'll talk about the Open Source Initiative uh, to define Open Source AI. And then, if we have time, I will talk about the uh, dilemma or the um, discussion uh, or debate that we have about uh, open sourcing AI. Um, a little bit about myself, I've done my PhD in BGU, Ben Gurion University in Israel. Uh, after that, worked for a corporate, so I paid my uh, duty uh, for a few years. After uh, working for Amdocs, I uh, co-founded uh, two startups, one in the patents domain and the other one in the privacy domain. And in the past year, I am doing mainly consultancy in AI and startups. Um, and in parallel uh, to most of it, or at least uh, in parallel since I, I worked for Amdocs, I was pretty active uh, with Linux Foundation AI uh, and data. Uh, I actually was one of the founders of the organization. So we started it in 2000, officially 2018, so more than six years ago. Um, when we started it, we had only one project. It was something very similar to something that all of you know today, which is Hugging Face. Pretty, pretty same concept, but not as successful. Um, and today, uh, we have dozens of uh, uh, projects. I will share more details about it uh, later. And I, I was uh, the first uh, uh, technical uh, chair of the Linux Foundation AI, so I had the opportunity to lead a lot of the activities in the early days. And I stay connected uh, with the foundation, uh, still volunteering, currently leading one of the working groups of the Generative AI Commons. And I will share a little bit more in a few minutes. So let's start with the Linux Foundation AI. So as I mentioned, we started it uh, uh, more than six years ago. And the, the goal was to basically provide a, a natural space to develop AI. Um, in the open. Um, the organization is structured into three main uh, activities, the governing activities under the governing board, um, less interesting to me, uh, the Technical Advisory Council, or the TAC. Uh, this is the organization that I'll, I led for a couple of years. And under the TAC, we bring projects new projects, new uh, uh, open source AI projects, and we have some uh, committees uh, discussing and promoting different, uh, uh, different things, different domains. And the Generative AI Commons, which is the organization uh, we started recently in September, um, which has five uh, uh, different working groups, and I will mention them in a second. Some, uh, some more information and statistics about uh, uh, the LFAI. So, uh, as I mentioned, founded in uh, two, 2018. We currently have more than 67 projects. Uh, a few of them uh, were added in the past few weeks, still not fully onboarded. Um, more than 3,000 uh, 3, uh, organizations. 75 members or organization members, um, more than 200 million line of code, uh, one, more than 100,000 contributors, 30,000 uh, 30, of them are active, namely contributed in the past year. And uh, overall, we have uh, more than uh, 250,000 uh, GitHub stars. And I actually was surprised that today in the keynote, uh, the guy from Hugging Face said that they have 350,000 guitar stars, which is pretty comparable. So it's, it's, I, I, I was happy to, to see that we are not far behind. Um, 
this is, these are uh, most of the hosted projects. Not all of them are uh, yet uh, uh, on fully onboarded, so you don't see all of them. Uh, some, some of the new ones, I don't think we... DBRX is here. I don't see the, the, the Intel stuff, but um, many, many projects. And uh, some of the organizations, or most of the organizations, not all of them, or the leading organizations. But everything that you see here, is coming from this, and, and I provided the QR code so you can use it. This is the AI uh, landscape. Um, we stole this uh, from uh, CNCF, so we use the same code. It's open source, so we, we copied it. It's a, an interactive landscape. You can play with it. You can uh, select different things. I highly recommend, if you're interested in this domain, go take a look and, uh, and uh, use it. Uh, as, as you can see, we, we mapped many, many uh, uh, open source solutions. Not all of them are, are LFAI. Those with like blue um, um, border are ours, but there are like most of the uh, important open source software in AI is mapped. Uh, are, the project are mapped in this uh, landscape. Okay, let's move on uh, to the. Um, Generative AI Commons and talk about uh, this organization a little bit. So we started it, uh, as I mentioned, in September last year. Uh, we already have more than 200 active uh, uh, members. Um, pretty, pretty impressive for such a, a, a young uh, organization. We have more than 80 organizations uh, uh, contributing. And basically, we created this initiative in order to, sorry, to promote open source uh, generative AI, uh, and to promote um, safe use of open source uh, generative AI. We are structured in five working groups, um, um, frameworks, models and data, applications, responsible AI, and education and outreach. I personally uh, lead, uh, uh, currently co-lead, which is great, uh, the, education, the, the education and outreach. And we have uh, quite a lot of activities in promoting AI, generative AI, open source within the developer community, as well as in the larger community um, in general. Um, I've been active with the responsible AI since we started it, I think, like five and a half years ago. It, it started as part of the Technical Advisory Council uh, activity, and we moved it into the Generative AI Commons because most of the energy is here, or in the Generative AI Commons, and we wanted to uh, get some more energy. Um, the committees, at least the two that I am part of, are pretty active. We have many members coming and helping, and this is maybe the most important uh, um, message here. Please join us. Please help. Please contribute. Please influence the uh, the open source uh, uh, domain. Uh, the frameworks uh, uh, initiative. Uh, this uh, is working or has been working on the model openness framework, and I want to present it quickly uh, because it will be relevant for the next uh, uh, part of what we are talking. So the model openness framework. Um, we started it. Uh, six months ago, maybe a little bit more than that. And we started it because of the discussion or what we call the open washing. What is open source AI? So can anyone say what open source AI is? Yeah? Okay, that's a good answer. So the, the answer is everything associated with the model is open, the, the weights, the data, the training uh, um, code, everything is open. And when I, first, uh, when I was first introduced to this question, this is exactly what I answered. And I will, in, in a few minutes, I will explain why it is not very accurate. But for sure, I can say that there are many, many open source models out there. So uh, uh, you can see everyone is presenting new model, and this is an open source model. Um, maybe. 
Uh, I'm not sure. And actually, I can say no. This is not an open source model. Why? Because there is no definition for open source model. And this will be the next chapter of this talk. But uh, there is a lot of confusion. And we started uh, uh, to work on the model openness framework in order to solve this confusion. And what we have done is basically to identify all the elements that are associated with AI model or um, AI system. And basically, you can see many, many elements. Uh, we can, uh, we can uh, uh, split them into three categories, code, data, and documentations. And everything is important. OK, everything is needed in order to be open. And basically, for each and every element here, we defined the associated license that should be applied in order to be considered open. Don't worry, I have QR codes for everything. So you can take a picture, but you will also get the QR code directly to the repository or to the website. Yes. Yes, they are already shared on the, on the Sketch platform, or whatever it's called. And basically, one, one thing that is important to understand, um, some of the open source models, or some of the uh, um, contributors or the developers of uh, models, they sometimes use the wrong um, license. So an MIT license doesn't work for data. Ibrahim mentioned that earlier today. So there are specific licenses for data, and they are mapped here, as you can see. Um, for example, this one. Um, and we basically analyzed and defined for each element what is the right uh, open, source mo uh, open source license uh, associated with it. And then we took it and defined three level classes of openness. So the lower class is open model. And you can see you need to provide the model arch architecture, the parameters and metadata, and technical report, and some cards. Um, and this is the, the lower level. Then the second level is open tooling, which means that you need to provide also on top of this the training code, inference code, evaluation code, uh, and data, uh, and so on. And then the, the highest class is open science. And this is uh, what you mentioned. Um, everything is open. Everything is open, and all the data is open, and all the, uh, um, everything associated with the model, namely all the elements, need to be open with the right licenses. Um, OK, so let's move on. This is something, so the, the model openness framework and this uh, was something that we have done as part of the Linux Foundation AI. And now I would like, uh, and the Generative AI Commons, and now I would like to jump into a different uh, uh, part of the uh, presentation. And this is the open source initiative. So the open source initiative, for those of you who don't know, uh, is the organization that is defining uh, open source licenses or open source in general, and uh, and have been done that have been doing that for many many years, um, and this organization in the past two almost two years is leading the effort to define open source AI, and. Uh, um, as you already probably understand, open source software is easy. It's code. You have one license, and that's it. And with open source AI, we have so many elements, and it's pretty complex. Um, the approach, um, or maybe before the approach, so the, it's important to understand, or I assume that everyone in this room agrees that the potential impact of open source AI, or AI in general, is pretty important. And hence, we would like, and, and as a global uh, uh, impact, and hence, it should be based on global input. And the process that we, uh, that we uh, the, the OSI is running for the past uh, almost two years, 
is getting a global input, getting uh, input from as many people as possible from all around the world, from different domains, different expertise. Uh, they, run, they ran many, many workshops. I attended one of those um, in, uh, in previous AI Dev. Uh, it was uh, San Jose in December. And I was asked then, OK, what is open source AI? And I said, yes, everything should be open. Um, but it's a little bit more complex than that. Um, and the reason that it is more complex is because data is something that is very problematic. Um, in order to train an LLM or foundation models in general, you need a lot of data. And the data, um, in many, many cases, the data has some components of copyright or some PII or some elements that could be problematic to be shared. And um, initially, uh, I thought that it's important to, to uh, share everything. But then if you look out, outside on all the development and all the open source that there is outside, you realize that basically none of them can be complete open, or what as we defined open science. And uh, there is a huge debate in, in, in the community about it. Uh, but um, the current definition, which is a version 008 that was published a couple of weeks ago, um, is doesn't require for open data. OK, so you, the, defini the current definition, the current state of the uh, uh, open source AI definition is that you don't have to provide open data, but you have to provide enough description and documentation about the data that will allow someone else to create and rebuild uh, your model. It's not perfect. Uh, of course, if we could have a, a complete open, like the open science level, it would be much better. But this is a, a, a compromise that I believe is the right thing at this point. Um, this is uh, just, just uh, uh, to give you a quick uh, overview about the, the definition and, and the way that it, it looks like. So preamble explains a little bit about what is a, a, a open source, uh, what what is AI and open source. Uh, we use the, the 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 AI definition of the OECD. Uh, then what is open source AI, and then a legal checklist. And the legal checklist is basically um, we took the set of uh, elements that I uh, that I presented earlier with the uh, MOF, we analyzed them, and we decided which ones we require for open source AI. And they are documented here. And basically, there is a legal checklist. You can mo go one by one and, and define uh, your um, um, licenses. And then you can have an open source uh, uh, mod, or you can declare an, uh, a model as an open source. Um, some of the, um, I, I talked about the, the data, so I, I'll, I'll repeat that because this is in, an important issue. We don't require the data. We require enough information about the data, enough description about the data in order to allow someone else, someone skilled in the art, to be able to build something which is almost the same. Uh, if the data is available, it's it's best. It's the best case, but uh, we don't require that. Um, we have done some validation. So uh, um, we had like 12 uh, open source model analyzed. And uh, um, with like volunteers uh, from the community. And basically, the results uh, you can see here, or some of the results, it's still, uh, it's still early. Um, we do have one confirmed yes, 
So this one, this uh, Pitaya, stands as a complete, like, uh, open source, uh, uh, confirmed open source uh, AI, which is great. That means that it's not an empty group of, uh, uh, of models. And we have a few that uh, almost uh, T5 and uh, Arctic are probably yes. So we assume it w they will be uh, confirmed as yes. Uh, we have a few confirmed no, but this is easy. So for example, Lama, it's easy because the, the license, even the code license is not open source. So it's not an OSI approved uh, uh, license. There are restrictions associated with it. But uh, th this is good, and, and the hope is that with that definition, and, and this is the same reason we created the MOF, with this visibility, companies and contributors will try to be more open and will be on the green uh, side rather than the red side. Um, What's the next step? So we are in the process here. Uh, so draft uh, 008 was published uh, um, in May. Uh, in, in a couple of days or weeks, uh, we will uh, uh, release the uh, first uh, RC1. And then in October, we will um, officially um, uh, uh, publish the definition, and it will be officially uh, uh, based on OSI uh, definition of open source AI. So this is, this is a process. Um, I would like some, some of the events that are uh, still on, on the schedule uh, in two weeks in, in the United Nations and, and some other uh, space uh, areas and, and conferences. Um, but I really want to ask you to join to provide feedback. Uh, uh, there we run bi-weekly um, town halls where, you, where everyone can come and, and see the, the, the news and, and uh, make comments. Uh, there is a forum, um, discuss open source org, you, you have the link here, where you can provide feedback. Uh, you don't, you, you just need to, uh, uh, to register, you can do like, free uh, or full, you can pay if you want, like donate, if you don't want, don't pay. But come, bring your, your ideas, bring your uh, uh, knowledge into the discussion in order to influence this very, very important uh, initiative. Um, before I, I jump to the next uh, topic, uh, maybe Any, any questions, any, any comments that you would like to? Yeah, yeah go ahead. <laughs> so the question is, okay, you have, uh, you have a definition for openness, but what about responsibility or responsible AI? And that's a great question. And the answer is that it, out, it is out of scope. And uh, it is out of scope for, for the AI definition, and it is out of scope for the MOF as well, the model openness framework that I presented earlier. But if you ask, I will, I will uh, share with you that we are working on a similar framework like the MOF. We are working on the uh, responsible AI framework as part of the, uh, our activities in uh, uh, gen the Generative AI Commons. And we would love your uh, contribution there as well. So please, if, if you're interested, this is, this is important, and, and we, we are happy to get more uh, uh, input. Yeah. So it means that if uh, a company or a Yes, the, 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 the approved licenses have to be the, the right licenses. Other licenses won't work for open source AI. Yes. Yeah.
Mm -hmm. So, so this is in the core of the debate. Uh, so the, the question was about uh, what about uh, copyright licenses and, and how do we deal with it in, in this framework? And so, of course, everyone uh, would love to have uh, open data as well. And the problem, uh, and I was not aware about it because I'm not a lawyer, but the problem is that even there are many um, data sources or data sets that could be open and free of uh, any uh, copyright uh, um, obligations in one jurisdiction, but are not free on, on another jurisdiction. And basically the argument uh, and the debate is that if, if you are taking the legal uh, um, approach, there is almost no free open data repository or, or data set that you can really use in order to train a foundation model. So this is why basically we like, or we, the, the, the OSI initiative, we took a step back and decided to not ignore the problem, but uh, b basically to, to take a realistic approach that will allow some, uh, uh, some contribution and some open source AI models. But yes, this is, this is exactly the, the, the heart of, of the problem. A any other questions? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> So, for, so this is a, this is a great question. What is the motivation here? And and actually, this is this is a good question. I maybe I should have talked about that with, even without your question. Uh, but uh, there are many incentives in order to um, move from closed uh, uh, source to open source. Uh, and I think maybe the most important one is innovation and collaboration. Uh, and but but your question is, is is right. So what? Only small number of companies can allow themselves to train those large models, which is true. But still, uh, if you provide these tools, more people can investigate into them. And I believe we we saw this morning in the keynote. Uh, um, I think it was the guy from da Databricks. He said that. Within one year, the, um, the cost to train the same model dropped in 80%, something like that. So maybe in one year, you can train uh, Llama 3 yourself. I don't know. But uh, there, there are you know, uh, many, many motivations for uh, open source innovation, uh, collaboration, uh, um, and some many others. Yes. Uh, not, not, not necessarily so as well, available, but also, so if, if I go back um, to the definition, um, th there are four freedoms that uh, um, are essential 
for uh, open source. So I'm not sure if you can, uh, you can see it, but it's up here. So use, study, modify, and share. It's, it's in the link somewhere. So, and and this, is, this is important. You, you have to have the ability to use the model uh, or, or the, the whatever it is, the, the source code, uh, um, to um, uh, study it. So basically go in and, and understand the element, the different elements, modify it, and share it. So these are the four elements, and this is why, um, and this is part of the definition of open source AI as well. Only the last point is no compatible with copyright licenses. Right? It, it, yes. So it, it, it depends. So um, I, I'm not an expert in copyright licenses, so I, I, I'm not sure. Maybe, but uh, it sounds like that. <laughs> Okay, so uh, the last, uh, any other questions? Are we out of time? Oops. So I'll just, uh, you know, I'll skip that. So you know what? Give me a minute. And, uh, and uh, so there is a debate, uh, a real debate in, in, in the industry, in the world, about should we even open source AI? if it's the right move, because AI is such a strong uh, um, technology, and maybe we should not do it. And uh, I, I put here the, the debate, and, and when I, um, I, I switch the order of the slide, but this is like not my computer, because this is like gloomy, and I didn't want to finish with it, but on the... Like the uh, opponent side, we have the technology is har can be harmful, can be used for deep fakes, terrorism, and, and so on. It is easy to remove, remove the safeguards. Even if we build into the model the safeguards, we saw how easy it is to remove those. Uh, it's like nuclear, nuclear weapon, we must restrict it. Uh, all those intellectual property uh, uh, um, problems, uh, and uh, it's not, I've heard even it's not uh, a technology, it's an entirely new species. And this is on, on, on that side, on the right side of the hell nope, and the go some of the godfathers of AI are part of this discussion, and they are in both sides. Uh, so it's not easy to take side here. Um, but on, on the positive side, we have... Um, this is the most important technology in, in, in the history, and it must be democratized, and it must be accessible to anyone. Um, and openness leads to innovation, uh, and we discussed about that. Um, it can solve many, many problems that we have, climate change, uh, health uh, um, in the health domain, etc. cetera. Um, of course, uh, centralization of power is bad. So we don't want uh, only a few companies uh, uh, to control this technology. Um, research, uh, open source allows more like advanced research in, in safety and security, which is good. Uh, we, we are not only relying on the big companies. And open source also enables diversity. So currently we have, uh, if, we, if, we take a, if we look at the large models out there, especially language models, because it's like more important. You know, I don't know if it's more important, but it's more significant there. Um, several companies in the Silicon Valley, one in France, one in the, some other places, but most of it is centralized in one location, one, uh, um, one culture, I would say. And open source allows to train it on different data sets, different uh, cultures, and to diversify the technology. And uh, I hope I finished with a little bit more optimistic look. And I want to, take you, to thank you. Uh, I enjoyed uh, uh, giving this presentation. And I am open for questions. Any other questions? <laughs> thank you. More questions? Please connect with me. This is my LinkedIn. If you need any other link, any other um, 
uh, like uh, information about all the initiatives that I shared, please. I, I'm happy to to, uh, to communicate with you. And please, if you think that you can contribute to the OSI initiative, if you, you think you can contribute to the um, all the generative AI Commons uh, initiatives, uh, if you have some time to contribute to the community, we are here and we would love to have you. Either if you're experts uh, in, in LLMs or you are novice to the, the, in this domain, we need different perspective. It's important. Any questions? Yes. No, no, no. It's everything. We, we are not focused specifically on LLMs. Other questions? Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Inter the, 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 the innovation, the explosion in innovation uh, uh, with the internet was because of, or not because, due to the open source. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the day.